Welcome, Captain, to the Priority One Shipyard. Today, we'll be looking at the Neo Connie 3. That's right, Captains. We'll be looking at the Titan, or as many of us know it now as the Enterprise G. Before we get into throwing asteroids around, though, here's the breakdown of what we're going through in today's review. First off, ship customization. The ship layout along with the consoles we use, the ship traits, bridge officer layout, the ship statistics in space, and then we'll get into some running some TFOs and patrols. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen and captains, let's jump into the fun and let's look at the customization this ship has to offer. Now I will say this is one of my favorite ships and my flagship at this current time of recording, so let's hop into the fun. That being said, here is the Constitution 3. This ship looks absolutely stunning in game and in the show. It's a very universal and tough little ship. Uh, the interior, obviously we do not have any custom interior for this ship. We just have the basic stuff you get from everywhere else. So with that being said, I'm going to leave it where I had it. Let it sit on the new, inter the new interior that Sergeant Online has updated. The Miranda, the updated Miranda, which looks fabulous. Uh, for the windows, we have the 1 through 6, except obviously we have the Galaxy class added, so we can leave it here. I personally leave it on the Type 6, because that's what default has it set to. We have the Connie 3 skin, along with the Defiant, the Galaxy class, the Intrepid, the Annex, Annex Refit, the Odyssey class, the Sagan, Sovereign, Sovereign Refit, Zero, One, Two, the Three, the Four, Five, the Six, the Seven, the Seven A, the Type Eight, 8B, the Upgrade, and the Veteran. That being said, uh, there are no style, other styles you can put on this vessel, since it is its only class type. The only thing you can change in advance is the pattern, but we are going to leave those alone, because uh, I do not do patterns. I love the original look of this vessel, just the way the nacelles and everything kind of meshes together. It just looks very sleek and reminiscent of the original Connie. And it just looks fantastic, and it's very strong. So let's get out of this tailor. Uh, the the Constitution 3 Mercury Worker Cruiser is obviously a Mercury Worker. Uh, I do have this upgraded to a T6X2. It's a cruiser, so it's four forward and four aft. Just has a deflector and impulse warp and shields. By default, it does come with four device slots, but with it being upgraded to this current style, it has six instead. Usually, by default, it has one universal console, but instead it has three. It has five engineering, two science, and four tactical. To start off with, let's look at the weapons. With this new patch, I have been running the Relictic Phase at Beam Array uh, from Picard Season 3. Uh, as everyone knows, these are the new weapons that got added, and anytime you attack a target with below 25% hull, you deal 30% phaser damage to the target. Uh, the ship, the weapons that came with this ship custom is the Narrow Anger Beam Array, standard issue. These come with this vessel. Uh, it has bonus damage, but it has a smaller targeting arc compared to the 250 targeting arc you have with 2 and 10. And for torpedo, we're running a prolonged engagement photon torpedo. Uh, some of you are probably asking why I'm not running Maelstrom. I'll be honest with you, this being my flagship, I'm running a theme build at the moment, so all of these weapons and abilities are going to be t aiming towards something you would see a Federation ship having. A Federation ship would normally not have a Maelstrom or a Quantum equipped, so the ship is equipped with its default factory photon torpedo that would come from Shipyard. The Deflector, Elite Fleet Interventive for Matter Deflector Array, running the uh, Interventive Impulse Engines, the Elite Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core, and the Tilly's Review Pending Modified Shield Array. 
for the after running three of those new phaser beam arrays along with the Terran Task Force phaser beam array from the Terran Task Force reputation which gives increased bonus damage. For devices we're just running the advanced battery, energy amplifier, subspace field modulator, we're running a silk press for speed, Ubiashi Maru, red matter capacitor for increased power levels, and a temporal negotiator. For universal consoles, we're running the uh, resilient module, particle conversion matrix, dynamic power redistribution module. For the engineering slots, we have the power flow module, the simulator module, bioneutral infusion circuits, dynamic converter, domino. For science, we have the reader integrity field, experimental power redirection. And for tactical, we're running exploiters for phaser damage. Some of you are wondering why I have so many consoles that deal with healing. Uh, this ship, with this being a cruiser and a theme build, I'm just it's kind of focused around being able to still dish out a good bit of damage, but also not dying, especially in elite TFOs, with those new now being a random feature we have in the game. Uh, so that is why we have the emergency interior field just to give that extra hull healing and stuff like that and the extra particle conversion matrix even though yes it does increase shield resistance it also adds energy damage and exotic damage and stacks up 10 times so it gives me plus 100% energy damage to myself the trait that comes with this vessel is thunder run Bonus during fire at will, beam overload, and cloak ambush. During fire at will, beam overload, and cloak, and cloak or cloak ambush, you get 20% bonus beam damage, and plus zero defense rating scales with speed, so if you're going fast, full speed, that scales up. If threatening stance is active, you get plus 150% threat generation. The layout of this vessel, it has a Lieutenant Universal Console Station, Lieutenant Commander Tactical Station, Commander slash Miracle Worker Engineering Station, a Ensign Tactical Station, and Lieutenant Commander Science slash Pilot Station. As you might have noticed, I'm running the new Tactical Beam Catapult, which throws asteroids at your enemy, because as we've all seen in Picard Season 3, which I hope we have, so spoiler alert, skip now if you don't want to hear it, Riker throws an asteroid at the Shrike. And it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, so that's also a piece we're running just to increase the look and feel of the ship, along with just testing out, see how it behaves. Uh, we're also running the MacOS AI, which is not normal. Uh, we're just testing it out, seeing how it behaves. I mean, they are very interesting new con not consoles. Bridge officer abilities, nothing. I haven't seen anything like these before, and they're very, very fun to watch. With that being said, though, some fun stuff I've been working on with having the ship as my flagship. We have good old seven of nine bridge officer that we've created from just using a Borg bridge officer. So if you're really into Picard and you want to have a seven of nine bridge officer with you, you can do that. You can even get some of the new weapons from Picard season three and give it to your bridge officer and use it yourself. So I would advise it. That being said, we're going to beam up and take a look at its stats in space. We are in space, and for the statistics of the vessel, general stealth detection rating is 29.5, power transfer is 271%, defense rating is 50, hull 111,000, hull repair is 163% a minute, shield regeneration 1,500 for every six seconds, shield facings is 12,000, resistance ratings, which is extremely high, is 44% for all facings except radiation, which is 36. The attack accuracy rating is 49%, Crit chance 30, crit severity 245. The movement inertia is 40, flight speed 39, and turn rate 6.7. So this actually turns faster than a previous ship I just did, the new Mirk Worker Science Spearhead that I just added. Very interesting. But you know, it's slower. What am I what am I talking about? It's slower. I can't think today. It's okay. <laughs> I can see the ship looks very, very sleek up in space, all the little blinky lights, all the extra pieces. But that being said, we're going to first 
probably pop into a patrol. Alright, we are back to Looks murder like some fight. stuff. Alright, Frankie, I'm coming for you. Lead the way. Sure God will follow. I'm leaving up of their ships for salvage. We're gonna throw an asteroid. Oh, I got two of them. Yes! Three asteroids! That's fine. More asteroids. She had a little bit of damage reduction. That's okay. Alright, that's why I like the photon over the maelstrom. Maelstrom it takes forever to recharge. Well the photon I can just keep popping off and it does good damage. Especially with it having a wider firing arc. Makes it much nicer to use on enemy targets and I can knock their shields off pretty quick. These asteroids are nasty. Little boogers. The nerve of some people. Gage tractor beam. Flight speed. Fun times when trays don't get laid out right. Oh, that's not good. That's why we have that. Still affecting me, but I'm not even near it. Interesting. Parts system. All 
All right, time to beat up some Kazon. Ah, that's interesting. He's already done half health. Time to get beaten up by a bunch of Torps. Just like that, we just Your kill a bunch of them. Looks like our fight got them to notice us. Let's go over and ask if they're. And this is why I love the Kani Three. She has one hell of a temper. Like it just pops off so much more often. We do what we want, where we want. Do you? I don't think you do. As much as thrown. Well done. She is nasty if you do it right. She is a nasty little bugger. Even though she's a miracle worker, she can do some crazy stuff. It would have been nice though to have an intel version of this ship, but I mean, beggars can't be choosers. Why is there two? See, this tree keeps messing up and it's making me irritated. Time for, I am saying, get a vortex or hive onslaught. Hopefully this time the Q. I guess we'll find out when we get there. And we're in our elite. Situation is grim. All at death. Which is fine. We'll still beat him up. The cloak. Oh god, it's one of those things. doing a lot of damage. Alright, there we go. Hall's dropping, hall's dropping.
enough. We made it. We made it.
All right, Captains, that'll be it for today's video. Uh, thank you for joining me on uh, Party One Shipyard. And have a great day. I'll see you all among the stars. Thank you so much to our Patreon supporters for helping to make all these Priority One Armada shows and streams possible. Well, that's it for this week's Priority One Armada Shipyard. Don't forget to like this video and leave a comment below with your thoughts. Follow us on Twitter at P1Armada and check out our website www.PriorityOneArmada.com for more information on our Star Trek Online in-game fleets. And join us every Saturday for the Priority One Armada live stream where we go more in-depth on this week's Star Trek Online news and take you, the viewers, on an away mission to earn in-game loot. Viewers can also win loot by entering our giveaways during each live stream. There's every Saturday at 9pm US Eastern on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. We host a range of other streams throughout the week focusing on different Trek games and news. If you want to subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on all the latest Star Trek Online news. That's it from me. Live long and prosper.